Hey everyone, this is Dan. Welcome to another episode of my Qualcomm videos. Qualcomm has been up 5% in the last 20 days, outperforming the semiconductor industry. It's up 56% in the last year. I own Qualcomm shares and might be buying more in the next few days. Why am I so bullish about Qualcomm? I will explain more in the next few minutes. First of all, let's look at how Qualcomm has been trending compared to the market and compared to other semiconductor stocks. On this chart, it's showing the one-year trend. The candlestick chart is Qualcomm, and the yellow line is SMH, the semiconductor ETF, and the blue line is QQQ, the purple line is SPY. As you can see, Qualcomm in the last year went up by 56%. About the same as their overall semiconductor industry, SMH, and QQQ and SPY went up by 41% and 29%. Definitely, Qualcomm was performing pretty well during the last year. This is the six month chart. It paints a very different picture. Qualcomm here is on the bottom compared to the other three lines. What happened? That's after the earnings announcement. Qualcomm's earnings disappointed the investors, and particularly it had to do with the trade tension between U.S. and China, as well as the litigation going on between the FTC and Qualcomm. I'll talk more about them later on in the next few minutes. Since then, it went flat for a while, and after the first quarter earnings announcement, it has recovered somewhat. And then they have a new CEO starting in July of this year. Overall, it's been holding pretty steady with the new CEO. If you look at the last 20 days, the picture is a lot better. Qualcomm now is on top again compared to the other lines. Looks like there's quite a bit of recovery going on. And what's driving that? I'll talk more about it in the next few minutes. I think it's probably a good opportunity to buy more shares now. Let me review my price target set in my July 17 video. Based on my calculations, I set a target to $160 a share to be reached by the end of October 2021. And the all-time high was $167, accomplished earlier this year. On the day I make the forecast, prior trading day, Friday 716, the market closed at 139 for Qualcomm. And as of the last trading day, which was 723 Friday, Qualcomm closed at $144.88, almost $145. The price has certainly moved in the right direction, approaching what I predicted. It still has a distance to go yet. Let's review some of the fundamental information related to Qualcomm. On this chart, we see that Qualcomm has a very large piece of the market share for smartphone processors. They are second only to MediaTek. The good news is that Qualcomm's processor tend to be more expensive and they are with higher performances than what's produced by MediaTek. And also Qualcomm owns a lot of the 5G patents. Every player in the cell phone market licenses from Qualcomm, including MediaTek, Apple, Samsung, and Huawei. And of course, the Huawei market share has been shrinking because of US sanction. This is a chart showing the revenues, EPS, and debt to equity ratio for Qualcomm. As we can see in the last three quarters, Qualcomm's revenues and EPS have been growing steadily. The debt to equity ratio has been steady. There is this dip here, which is the first quarter of 2020. And the main reason is because the China sanction. And since then, it looks like the company has adapted and it has started to grow again in terms of revenues and EPS. See again? This particular quarter has to do with the U.S. sanction on Huawei. On April 28th, Qualcomm announced their first quarter earnings, and that was pretty good news because on a trailing 12-month basis, the revenue increased by 25% and the net income increased by 54%, which is very impressive. As a result, the stock price jumped the next day. However, then the semiconductor industry overall suffered from a dip starting about 20, 30 days ago, and Qualcomm went down with it. And since then, Qualcomm has recovered a lot faster than the overall semiconductor industry. We will spend more time looking at the charts again later on. The second quarter earnings announcement is coming up, 
It'll be announced after market on July 28th. I'll be watching the price movements very carefully in the next few days. And I'll be sending out Twitter messages to my subscribers when anything new develops. Back in 2020, Qualcomm was very much involved in a big lawsuit brought on by the Federal Trade Commission. And as of August 11, 2020, Qualcomm won a round in this lawsuit brought on by the U.S. government, which was good news. Better yet, as of March 17 of this year, the Wall Street Journal reported that the U.S. government is unlikely to go to the Supreme Court to continue to pursue the lawsuit against Qualcomm. In the meanwhile, Qualcomm also have already settled a lawsuit with Apple and a few other cell phone makers. And that's why all these lawsuits are mostly behind them, which is a very nice positive turn. This is from the most recent quarterly earnings report. What I did was I looked at the various segments where they derive their revenues, especially I look at these two columns. The sixth month ended on March 28th, 2021 and March 29, 2020, and compared the growth in revenues. As you can see, the handset market, which is the largest piece of the revenues, grew 65%, pretty impressive. But the RFEF market segment, which is a radio frequency front end segment, grew by 85%, whereas the automotive segment grew by 42%, pretty impressive. And IoT market, Internet of Things market, grew by 59%. So the RF FE market, radio frequency front end market with 85% growth is a very positive sign because everybody knows that Qualcomm is very strong on 5G. They're very strong on cell phone processors and they've been getting a lot of revenue from licensing agreements on their patents. But this radio frequency front end is really a new segment of business that they've been growing. And from the numbers, we know that they are not resting on their laurels. They're not being complacent. They are actually developing, growing, and growing very aggressively. And that's why I'm very bullish about a company. Another good piece of news is that Qualcomm recently acquired a company called Nuvia. And Nuvia has a technology for designing PC processors, which Qualcomm will use. And the new processors will be rolled out in the second half of 2022. And from what I heard, the new processors from Qualcomm will challenge those from Intel and AMD. So that's another new development from Qualcomm that's very bullish. If you like what you've seen so far, I'd like to encourage you to click the like, subscribe, and notification button so that you'll be notified when I publish my next video. It'll also encourage me to make more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. Let's continue. If you want to know more about the fundamentals of Qualcomm, you might refer back to my February 21st video. It looks like this. In that video, I spent 30 minutes deep diving into a lot of details about Qualcomm, especially I spent a lot of time talking about the lawsuits and patents and also the industry landscape, how the Qualcomm processors compare to the processors from the other chip makers. First of all, they have more than 120 5G licensing agreements. That's the area of the traditional strength. And their Snapdragon 800 series processors have been very successful. They have definitely the market leadership in 5G chipsets. And they have the leadership in the gaming cell phone segment. And they are growing the radio frequency front end segment very quickly. They recently settled quite a few major lawsuits. And we see the continual increase in sales and earnings. I do believe that the dip in the Qualcomm shares in the last six months was primarily due to the lawsuits that were hanging over them like a dark cloud. Now that the lawsuits with the FTC has been brought to an end and the lawsuits with Apple have been settled, I believe the cloud has been lifted and the investors are starting to come back to Qualcomm. And that's why we're seeing the stock going up again, especially in the last 20 days. And I expect that trend to continue. It's very interesting at this juncture to look at the charts. We'll get to that in the next few minutes. In the spirit of a full disclosure, I do have to mention that Qualcomm has a couple of weaknesses. First of all, they are reliant on Samsung and Taiwan Semiconductor 
to produce their processors because Qualcomm doesn't have its own foundries. In that sense, Qualcomm is no more disadvantaged than AMD or NVIDIA or MediaTek. They also are dependent on Taiwan Semiconductor or other semiconductor foundries to produce the chips. And Apple is supposed to be making its own 5G processors, although that probably will not come to fruition until at least a couple of years from now. Let's quickly go over a few charts that I pulled from the Better Investing Stock Selection Guide database. This chart shows the revenues for Qualcomm from 2011 to the first quarter of 2021. As you can see, the revenue have been running pretty steady and recently actually there's been an uptake after they suffered a decrease, primarily due to the sanction on China. And if you look at the industry, it's been pretty much trending the same way. EPS, there was a dip in 2018. Primarily, there was a tax-related maneuver because they were bringing back profit from overseas and they had to do a big tax write-off in 2018. So it wasn't really anything bad about a company. And if you look at the last three quarters, the EPS has been growing. Return on equity, extremely impressive, definitely. It took a big jump upward. And the debt to capital ratio, they tend to be higher than the industry average. But the good news is that in the last few quarters, they've been getting that under control. And since Qualcomm is making a lot of profit, generating a lot of cash, I'm not worried about the debt ratio. Let's look at what the analysts have been saying, especially any change that happened in the last seven days between the time I published the July 17th video and today. First of all, the closing price, it went from 139 to 144. It certainly went up in the last seven days. My target is still 160 at this point. Yahoo Business did not change anything, still a buy rating. Louis Nevalier didn't change anything. Still, he looks not favorably on Qualcomm. He's the only analyst in this table who doesn't look favorably on Qualcomm. He gave him an overall rating of C. Tips ranks actually increased the average target from 172 to 174 and definitely increased the low target from 122 to 148. That's quite an increase. And CN Money increased the low target from 136 to 148. The street.com also increased the target from 181 to 185. Overall, we see an uptake in the sentiments of these opinion drivers, and that's a bullish sign. And that's why I'll be watching the charts very carefully, and I'll be buying more shares when the time is right. This is a quick review of my own valuation that I show in a July 17 video. And from these calculations, I arrived at the conclusion $160 a share to be reached by the end of October 2021. Actually, based on my assumption, Qualcomm will have a peg ratio of no more than 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And that's a very conservative peg ratio. And that's why I'm comfortable with my target at this point. Most likely, I'll revise the target up pretty soon when the price starts moving up. Let's look at the charts. This is the daily chart since May. We can see that it's been trending up this channel, making higher highs, higher lows. And in the last few days, it certainly moved up impressively and it's really hitting this upper boundary. Definitely, it's at a resistance point now. If you look at the RSI ratio, it showed an overbought signal here around June 28th, 29th or so. And sure enough, the price went down before it picked up again. DMI showed a buy signal about four days ago. And MACD is finally turning bullish. This here is a little bit alarming because it's hitting that upper boundary of the trend line. If you look at the hourly chart, it's been definitely trending upward as well. And we can see this historical resistance point at 146. This level was reached about seven, eight days ago. And that's why when the price started approaching that point, it will be a resistance as well as some other resistance levels that I'll be talking about later on. If you look at the RSI ratio, it's flashing an overbought signal. Actually, in the past, when RSI hit this level, the price came down for a few days or at best went flat here. 
and here also went flat for a few days, then went down. And that's why it's very possible that in the next few trading hours, the price might pull back a little bit before it starts marching up again. If you look at DMI, we have a bullish buy signal here on Friday, and MACD actually returned a little bit bearish. So on an hourly perspective, it's probably not very bullish for the next few trading hours. I'll be waiting until it starts turning bullish again before I buy more shares. Let's look at the support and resistance levels. Here I drew the Fibonacci diagram. I use this point in early March as a minimum, and this point in January, the all-time high as the maximum. And you can see that we are right at the Fibonacci 50% point. I like this diagram because it actually correctly predicted some of the major price points. And then at 23.6%, we see these price points. And then also at the 38% level, we see these price points. That's why I believe this chart is pretty solid. And based on what's on this chart, I see support at 141, which is the middle of the Bollinger Band, 20-day simple moving average. The next level down will be 137, which is the lower Bollinger Band, the purple line. And the next level down will be 135, 100-day simple moving average, the blue dash line. And the next level down is 132, this historical level. And then the next level down will be 124, which was this minimum point. For resistance, the next level up is actually at the current level, which is a pretty strong resistance because it's the upper Bollinger Band, as well as the Fibonacci 50% level. It'll be very important for the price to get above that level because before it can gather up in the momentum to move much higher. The next level up will be 150, which is Fibonacci 61% right here. And then the next level up will be 157, which is Fibonacci 78%. And the next level up will be 167, Fibonacci 100%, which is the all time high. Let me recap my price target, which is $160 to be achieved by the end of October. And as of the last trading day, Qualcomm closed at $144.88. What are my strategies? I've been holding Qualcomm shares for the long term, and I've been swing trading the rest of my shares. In the next few trading hours, we might be seeing a pullback because we're getting up to the resistance point now and I will wait for the price to break resistance or maybe pull back a little bit and then hit a support point and start going up again before I buy more shares. In general, I will buy when the price breaks major resistance or bounces back from a major support point or when positive news happens. And I'll sell a major resistance point or when adverse news happens so that I can lock in my short-term profit. And I usually update my subscribers by way of Twitter messages when I buy or sell shares or when there's any significant news that happens. If you like what you've seen so far, I'd like to encourage you again to click the like, subscribe, and notification button. Also, at this point, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my Twitter account, which is Dan Market L. This is an example of what I tweeted on July 13. I tweeted to my subscribers that I just bought more BioNTech shares on the dip. And since then, the price of BioNTech has gone up substantially. And I also explained why I did that. As usual, I will very much welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions that you can send to my Twitter account as well as by way of my YouTube channel. I'd like to remind you at this point that I'm not a financial advisor. I share my stock trading strategies for educational purpose only. You should make your own decision when you want to buy or sell stocks, and you should definitely consult with your financial advisors before you do so. This wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck with your financial investments.